I had quite a long journey into costume design. I trained as an architect um, because I knew I wanted to be a theatre designer. And in England, you design sets and costumes. And I felt that architecture was a good way in. Um, obviously, you've got to do design the sets, you've got to do working drawings, and it's a great learning curve for a design process. I worked in the theatre for probably 15, 16, 17, I'm not quite sure how many years. And a lot of the directors I was working with were moving into film and television, and I, I just did the crossover with them. It's difficult because when you start, you're always working on a, on a crippling budget, so you're balancing whether you're compromising or whether you're delivering. There have been a few moments, but I don't think they were particularly early on. I think, they, I think you just follow your instinct and you keep doing it. You don't really know what you're achieving or where you stand or how, how your work is coming together for quite a long time. I think there was a moment in Elizabeth the Golden Age, which is obviously quite a long way down the line, where I kind of went out on a limb because we couldn't use black for the Elizabethan court in that film. And black in a period film is your, is your safety net. It's a, it's a great kind of go-to, particularly when you're hiring stock and you're on a budget. And I chose to do the court base color as the color of the stone. And there was a moment when we were filming in Winchester the Cathedral and the whole court were processing with Kate as Elizabeth I. And I thought, oh, it works. <laughs> I think research is, is crucially important, whether you're going to be accurate or not. As a designer, I need to know, I need to understand the period so that I'm in control of the decisions I'm making, whether I'm staying true to period or I'm reconceiving it or interpreting it. Our job is to tell a story. And I think sometimes to be overly bound in period accuracy is, is is a red herring, but you need to be free to make design, good design decisions. Mary Queen of Scots was my third trip into the Elizabethan period. It was very interesting, it's quite unique to read a script with a body of knowledge, both in terms of understanding the period, what it takes to make the costumes, and knowing the stock that is available to you. So I came with a body of knowledge and I read the script, and the other important factor, we had a, we had a tiny budget. So there were lots and lots of factors all kind of swirling around. And the script, it's, it's such an extraordinary story about these two queens. Because of the knowledge I had, I was able to land very quickly on a, on a rather kind of hot-headed, instinctive approach as to how I wanted to do this film. The solution was denim. Um, there were many factors that led me towards that, which were both artistic and practical. And it's very rare that, that everything adds up to seemingly a good solution. And I think the danger of that is that you do have to you have to test your solution constantly in the early stages before you've got to commit to it so that you're not shoehorning something into a rather willful idea. So I think there's a, there's a double-edged sword with that, um, that kind of instinctive approach. I think the, the part of our job that is, is never really taught is, is how you lead a team, how you enable your team to get the best out of them. And that's, that comes with time. It takes a huge team to deliver, particularly, you know, if it's contemporary, you have the luxury of shopping. If you're making in period, it's a massive team. You have your workroom, which is cutters, stitchers, embroiderers, you have a textile department. On Mary, we had a, a huge aging, dying textile department because we factory made everything. We made all the crowd and they come back as kind of crisp new denim. And the whole point of that concept was that I wanted clothes that were molded to the body and the dirt and the patina as part of the decoration. So we found a very good technique of putting sort of crusty horse scurf on the inner thighs of all the men's trousers. You know, it's a massive department. And I think a lot of people don't know about that as part of making costumes. You then have your on-set team, you have your fitting team, you have your wrapping team, it's, um, and you have your design team. And it's a huge, it's a huge team effort. I try to have a, as small a team as possible because I like people to really take responsibility and be involved, but equally I don't want people to keel over with exhaustion. Budget dictates how you can do it as well. You know, you have to be very um, mindful as to how you crew your team. So obviously I start with the script and I talk to the director, um, but at that point we're only using words. So words have to become visuals. So I collect images and I'm quite old fashioned. I make them into mood boards, which I literally cut and paste myself because in, in distilling the images, you're editing, and there's a, there's a kind of composition of ideas that you put together on these mood boards in how you juxtapose the visuals and, and what weight you give to an image. And then when I've done the mood boards, they provide a dialogue because everybody sees something different in an image. So it means it's a process that grows. And 
I'm happy to do costume drawings, but I prefer not to, because I think if you do a drawing, everybody kind of ducks down a bit and goes, that's what we're going to do, and it doesn't grow beyond that. So my choice is, if the communication is good and everybody understands what I'm doing, to just stay with the mood boards and then move into the workroom and work with the cutters. And the joy, you know, the excitement comes from the talent of my team. The idea is running and I become an editor of ideas that they bring. I like to use colour um, and what I've realised from feedback from my team is that my response to colour is very instinctive. So I do rely on colour because I think it's one of our biggest kind of storytelling signposts. And then within the film Mary Queen of Scots, red was the colour of Catholic martyrdom and historically she wore a red chemise to her execution because she wanted the theatricality, the statement, the political statement of being a Catholic martyr. When Mary's walking to her execution, the black dress that she's wearing literally splits and comes away. There's a lot of technical rigging. There, you, you know, I have the benefit of set costumers who are brilliant. You know, you say, I need this dress to do this. Obviously, we've built it to deliver that, but also the dress has to be built for a walking and talking sequence. So it has to, we've only got one dress, it has to to work both ways. The expertise that the set costumers bring in, okay, we can, you know, we can do this trick and this trick and uh, let's see if it works. Within designing costume, there are so many processes and there are many processes that aren't necessarily to do with design but are equally creative. So my advice to anybody starting was, would be to get experience, to actually find out what it takes, what all the departments do, where you feel you fit in. But if you want to design, yes, you've got to learn your craft, you've got to learn how it works, but also I think it's really important to keep designing. So if you're designing for low budget student films, for the theatre, for anything, keep doing your own work so that you develop your own style and your own confidence in tandem with practical experience. I think the part of the job I love, I love doing the research and the mood boards because that's, that becomes private, quite kind of adrenalised process where you're discovering the world, you're beginning to understand what it could be that you're trying to do. It's also quite a scary part of the process because you don't quite know where it's going. So you are kind of on edge as to, as to what the possibilities are and the discovery of that, particularly things that you didn't know about a period or things that really excite you, whether it's looking at a piece in a museum that has an extraordinary color combination. You know, instead of it all being a bit faded and sepia, you see something that's in pristine condition and you go, wow, they had extraordinary colors. The most fulfilling part is when you're in a fitting and you go, it's going to work. <laughs> I'm Alexandra Byrne. I'm a proud member of the Costume Designers Guild.